I guess we all react to things differently. Uh, but let me just get this out of the way right out of the gate here. Everyone, just about everyone sucked yesterday. Just about everybody sucked. Carson Wentz sucked yesterday. The offensive line sucked yesterday. Doug Peterson sucked yesterday. Just about everybody sucked yesterday. So that just real quick. But just how we react to things differently. Um, Jamie tells me after he got home from doing the postgame show, he goes home to see his little Skyler. And he's like, hey. I was right with the world, right? Wasn't that a nice feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Just like the, just angry, taking calls of angry people. I probably got it out of my system in the three hours of post-game show. Flushed it. Lotus tried to shut my laptop in the fourth <laughs> quarter, and I was like, you need to leave. <laughs> and that's after my... That's, that's after, aggressive. That's after t- I, I looked her right in her face, and I said, listen, you little adorable little thing. <laughs> Did you get down on your all fours and look at her in the face? <laughs> No, I was on the sofa, and she literally, she went up. I went to reach for my beverage, which was just uh, ice water, and uh, it was different by the time the game was over and the press conferences were over. And I reached over, and I looked over, and then boom! As I'm reaching over, and I'm reaching left, she reaches right, closes the laptop. I'm like, ha ha! Everything was fine, though. Uh, Mm. Well, except for the uh, Eagles football team. Wow, that was terrible. That was god-awful. Maybe we should call them the Philadelphia football team from here on out. <laughs> yeah, they don't they, deserve a nickname. They weren't our Eagles. They were not our Eagles yesterday. And as, as great as they looked, like they looked like they were going to win that game, like a thousand to nothing. And then all of it, all of it, all, like, all of a sudden, that offensive line really started to look like what you would expect an offensive line that stated Nate, uh, started Nate Herbig and then also started uh, uh, Jack Driscoll, a rookie. Uh, basically, two rookies starting on your right side of line of scrimmage there. They started to look like you would assume they would look like in a game like that, going up against Chase Young, going up against Ryan Kerrigan, going up against a defensive line like that, all first-round picks as it's been noted a thousand times. But my goodness, that bad? Eight sacks bad? I don't care if you're down to your third string right tackle like you were with Jordan Mailata. At some point, boys, fellas, come on. Step up and make something happen. And it's really weird to say this sentence. And I I approached this territory last year, and I believe it was in the Lions game that was in Philly, where Carson Wentz had a couple of errant throws, but also the offensive line was bad, and there's a bunch of sacks, a bunch of drops and all that. But it's really weird to say, man, the offensive line was terrible. God, the quarterback got sacked eight times. And then also say in the same breath that Carson Wentz, your quarterback, also was god-awful yesterday. And I don't want to hear. And he said it after the game, and it drove me nuts. Oh, it was kind of the tale of two halves. (laughs) You think? Night and day. Beautiful drop pass into Dallas Goddard for their second touchdown. Great pass where he read the field, found Zach Ertz for their first touchdown in the back of the end zone. He looked sharp. He looked crisp. He didn't look like, oh, what preseason? Oh, uh, what modified training camp? Whatever it might have been. Not at all. Oh, look crisp. And... And then the first interception, what was that? Was, was it the wrong route? Second interception, uh, was Hightower supposed to come back to the ball on a hitch? I don't know. But I just know both those throws did not look as crisp as no. the Carson Wentz we saw earlier in that game and the Carson Wentz that we saw close out the year last year where he played phenomenally well. But to go through the reads and the progressions, to be hit as many times as he was, to the go but to go back to the sacks, and I have about three or four of those eight sacks that are his fault, maybe even five that he could have at least gotten rid of the ball. Yeah. But that would have been asking a lot of the quarterback. But man, when he got hit, a lot of them were early. Some of them he was allowed five seconds to try to make a decision to at least get rid of the ball. And that's where you gotta look at your quarterback and say, What are you doing in this game, man? You expect an offensive line to struggle. You don't expect a quarterback to the caliber that Carson Wentz can play at to have as many struggles as he had yesterday. And before the half, he was missing throws left and right. He missed an Ertz throw where he threw behind him. He missed missed a throw to Deshaun Jackson that almost was intercepted. He... Two throws down the field. Two deep balls, yeah. One drove me crazy because there it was right there for the take. And the other was a, was a launch of a Hail Mary. Just right, right, right. The pressure. one that Jackson was a Hail Mary yeah. coming across field, yeah. But the first one of those two. Rager was wide Rager, open. Was again wide open. Yeah. You already hit him once for a 55-yard gain. On a play where, on a, on a series where you were sacked three times, started out on your own four-yard line, and then somehow still got three points out of it. But that, And that's what good teams are supposed to do. Hey, overcome a couple of the struggles. They weren't able to do that as the game went on, and they just continued to get worn down. Like there is really no, there's like two people maybe that I really liked yesterday. Um, one was that Darius Slay guy. We were a little worried about uh, 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 Terry McLaurin and what he could do in a game in the game like this. Darius Slay played fine. Avante Maddox first start in this new position, more or less, played great yesterday. 
when it comes to the offensive line, when it comes to the offensive side of this football team, they just were immensely disappointing yesterday. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. I know a lot of people were looking forward to yesterday's game is that breath of fresh air, and we certainly talked about it as such. But the minute I saw Lane Johnson was out, the minute I saw that you didn't even have Matt Pryor at right tackle, or excuse me, right guard, and you had Nate Herbig, and also you knew you weren't going to have Miles Sanders, yeah, that was where I really started to worry about the well-being of Eagles fans going into the game. Yeah, well, once they announced that Lane Johnson was out, you kind of took a deep breath and, oh, God, can they get by on this? Mm. What, so what the hell was training camp all about? You, you, Matt Pryor was on your starting lineup somewhere, all during training camp, somewhere, somehow. He was always there until until Jason Peters so graciously agreed to go to left tackle, and then things got all messed up. You you wind up starting the game with Herbig and, and Driscoll? I mean, what, yeah, what, what I don't, exactly? I don't, I don't, we we I hadn't. I, I checked back in papers, everything. I never heard of that. Never heard of that. Uh, like you know, Lane Johnson's been out. I didn't. You know, we didn't know that. Then it comes down to Jordan Mailata. Uh Why is Why is Pryor on the team? Cut him today and go sign Cordy Glenn. Like, because what, what are you doing? And then you do all these great things offensively in your first, you know, five six possessions, whatever it may be. Washington makes adjustments. They start jumping all the short routes that you're running. You, you know, you see that happening. Uh, you try to go long, and all right, that's not working, and you're not, you know, you haven't done that for a few years with Carson Wentz, but now you have the weapons to do it, so you try it. And then uh, Carson Wentz is rolling out, doing some neat things that way. And then I'm watching the team, and I'm saying, oh, my God, I know exactly what they're going to do every time. <laughs> Doug Peterson's adjustments were nothing, nothing. Washington adjusted. They adjusted. They started jumping what the Eagles were doing. They took this way. They took that away. And then I'm watching Doug Peterson leave his quarterback. Now, his quarterback played horribly, but he's leaving him in the same position every damn time. Why are you go? I am so sick and tired of people saying, oh, Doug Peterson, great coach, because he goes for it on fourth down. Really? If that's And I'm not saying if you make it or don't make it, it doesn't matter. But that's what makes a good coach, because he's gutsy to go for it on fourth down. Any of us could say, yeah, let's go for it. That's not a great coach. And the stupidity yesterday, he could have been playing the 97-5, the Fanatic pickup team in football. If it's 17-14, to 14, you're ahead. You have to do the smart things to win. I don't care who you're playing against. Going forward on fourth down twice was not the smart thing. No, it wasn't. It was horrible. It was not the play for it, but the thing, the, the time for it, but the thing that really drove me crazy about Doug Peterson was, regardless of whose fault any of the sacks were, if you see your quarterback getting pressured 15 times, getting sacked eight times, don't, don't but hey, just a just a thought. Run the ball. Just at least, yeah. What happened at to least that thing? One, at least one play where you know your quarterback's not going to get hit. And also, maybe you would spare your offensive line in the time of actually having to pass block for more than three or four seconds, and they could just worry about thud. They could just worry about blocking somebody instead, or excuse me, just hitting somebody to get him out of the way of a running back. Yeah. Just, we, why not do we, that? We had this conversation last year. Where were the design rollouts to help Carson yeah. use his athleticism to his favor yesterday? You know, I was watching the uh, the Saints game when I was doing post game with Andrew, and it kept showing Drew Brees' time in the pocket with the ball. And it was like the last three years. It was like 2.48, 2.5, 2.53. Where is that from this offense, especially in those situations where you're under duress all day? Get rid of the ball quickly. Mm -hmm. And it seems like everything they do is slow developing and a torturous wait for Carson in that line, and Carson can't handle it right now. It's like a Pop Warner team. Oh, this kid's really fast. All right, run a fly. Run a fly, run as fast as you can, we'll throw it to you. Did you see one slant run by a fast Eagles wide no. receiver where was yesterday? Deshaun and Jalen Rager underneath what? getting some exactly. ball, the balls in their hands? Because they never do it. Because he never makes an adjustment to play to his strengths. What Doug Peterson did yesterday was show off his weaknesses. Here's a weakness. Look, look how bad it is. And he kept doing it over and over and over again. Not one time did you see a slant from one of your fast wide receivers. I went back and looked at tape of Jalen Rager last night. He did a lot of that at TCU. Mm -hmm. He ran a lot of slants. I, I don't know. What happened to – in every play, it's a sit-down play. Receiver runs, sits, pass. Run, sit, pass. Like, change it up. Do something different. So, in the third quarter, I believe it was, late in the third quarter, the Eagles had started struggling. Carson Wentz had already thrown the two interceptions. And they made an adjustment. Magically, they made an adjustment. 
They went from their own, I believe it was 25-yard line, to the 22-yard line of the Washington football team. And then that's when Carson Wentz took the 13-yard sack. 1,000%. That's one that's undebatable, uh, not debatable. That was 1,000% his fault. But he takes that huge 13-yard loss, knocking him out of field goal range, essentially, 53-yard field goal that was, uh, that was missed by uh, Jake Elliott. And you're looking at that particular play, and you're going, wait a minute, in that whole series, you ran hurry up. You ran no huddle. You yeah. did really th- – that was great. Great adjustment, Doug. And and then they never really went back to it after that. I couldn't believe – it started working for them. They started catching the Washington, uh, the Washington football team off guard, and then they didn't go back to it for the rest of the game. I don't think they went back to it until late in the fourth quarter when everybody would go to it in that situation. Yeah. But that was the adjustment to make. He made it, and they didn't do it. But you talk about Washington's adjustments – Notice how much the off- the defensive line of the Eagles was dominating the early goings of that. First two series, defensive line dominating the offensive Malik line. Malik Jackson got two third down stops in a row. Uh, yeah, Absolutely incredible. He had the, uh, the great play in the backfield tackle for loss by Brandon Graham. And then after that, you see Ron Rivera start to make some adjustments. You see, the, you see Washington start to make some adjustments where they started running away from the line of scrimmage, misdirection, rolling out Haskins. Hey, great idea. Try to avoid their weakness. Unbelievable. The Eagles never did it. Did you see the Nothing. field position that, that D.C. started with in the second half? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I think, eight, maybe even nine possessions that started. Or no, maybe it was six. Excuse me. My numbers are all jumbled in my brain. Uh, in Eagles territory. Six, yeah. yeah. Six six of nine, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. So here's, we're all angry about this loss. No one is giving any excuses. I'm more like sad oh, than no, angry. I, oh, I am. I'm like past the sadness point. I'm, I'm like, not angry. Yeah. No, you want angry. Get Egan in here. My God. No, like, he's depressed. I'm like it, worried about him. It, me too. <laughs> I mean, he's suicidal almost. It's 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 bad. I uh, I'm, I I look at this this game and I and I'm I'm angry. I'm still angry. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm I am disappointed, but I didn't I didn't get the outrage in terms of who should be cut, who should be traded, who needs to be fired. Like right out of the gate with it, I'm telling you right now, I'm not doom and gloom on the season because of this one loss because they opened up and lost. What will hurt my confidence more so than anything is if they don't do anything to attempt to patch up this offensive line. Because Jordan Mailata, hey, man, he ain't it. Uh, Jake Driscoll, uh, right out of the gate here. Jack Driscoll, right out of the gate, not it. I'm going to go ahead and assume Nate Herbig, not it. That that was the second best option, well, second and third best options for this offensive line. And I know we're going to bring this up a lot, but, man... 53, much rather would have had an offensive lineman there. Maybe another running back at the 53rd overall pick as opposed to a guy that was inactive going into that game. So I look at even Howie Roseman as a guy that I'm pissed off at about yesterday. No question. Like, there's there's a To talk about bright spots just seems wildly inappropriate on a day like today because we got to react to yesterday's game. And the only way to really do that is to vent our frustrations about what we saw. So you looked at Carson Wentz's play yesterday. And to reiterate... You're talking about a time, a game, where a quarterback was sacked eight times. And I'm still more mad at what the quarterback did because I expect better play from him than I do an offensive line. Oh, but don't those two things go hand in hand? Well, sure they do. But maybe mm, if he gets rid of the football, he's only taken four sacks in that game. Maybe if he's making more heads-up plays, he can actually make something else happen and live to play another day, live to play another down. Like, I, I don't know what the, I, I mean, just look at that I just one. I think he's a lot better than what we saw yesterday. That one sack that took him out of field goal range. If you get three oh there, God. that changes how you attack the rest of the game because then you're only a touchdown down. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, he's got to be a lot better. How is it among Marty Morningway, Scrangello, or whatever? Uh, Doug mm. Doug Peterson, a new offensive coordinator, a new wide receivers coach. How is it that you're not learning anything? Uh, seriously, it's almost like Joel Embiid watching him do the same things over and over and over again. It's like watching Ben Simmons not shooting a jump shot. How is it after five years, Carson Wentz doesn't know when to throw a ball away? I mean, you know, my, my wife was watching and saying, get rid of the ball, get rid of the ball, get rid of the ball. What is he doing? Everything's so slow well, developing. Well, it's unbelievable. Uh, look, we love the guy that wants to stand in there and make a big play. But is, is it wrong to be smart while you're playing? Is Is that wrong? Look, Carson Wentz is a guy that supposedly never got a B on a test, and we heard. Well, that I'll tell a you lot. what he played. He played a stupid <laughs> game yesterday. He got, I, he got he got he got his first F yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> There's no question about it. Um, that yeah, wasn't I, his first F. He's uh, been bad before. Yeah, I, but but in all seriousness, though, when you look at how he did play in that first half, especially in the first uh, quarter and a half of the game, and then you look at how they finished, 
it wasn't just the interceptions. And when you do look at the interceptions, they're, they're, they're bad. But when you look at those two, both of them were to rookie wide receivers. I don't know if the right route was run. Uh, ultimately, I look oh, at the quarterback. Oh, Hightower's got to fight for that. He's got to fight for it, but the ball was, like, thrown on top of him, which sounds good, but I don't know if he was running a hitch or if he was just running. It was a hitch, and he stood flat-footed at the top of the route. Yeah, he turned around. The ball He's was He's got to attack the ball. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, but, but again. Look, if rookie. that's a veteran wide receiver, that's probably not an interception. Probably not. But that's what you get when you have rookie wide receivers all over the place. And I, you could say that Carson stared him down on that throw, but that was the one read. It was a quick throw. Like, what was he going to do, look him, look off a safety when yeah. he's thrown to the flat, essentially? No, he's not. I, I look at that first throw, though, and that looks like it's on Carson. I don't know if Rager yeah, ran, totally. ran it It didn't out. come out right. Like, when he threw it, it was kind of like, whoa. Well, Rager looked like he was running an out route, and Wentz expected him to come back to the ball yeah. instead of going to the sideline. Yeah. So that that play, I think, is on Carson. Now, we were never, hopefully we'll find out today when Doug Peterson addresses the media around 2.30 today, and we'll figure that out. But we got a lot to react to, obviously, yesterday. But my main thing is, when you look at yesterday's play, do you look at Carson more so, or do you look at the offensive line? Because you could also look at Doug Peterson and the lack of adjustments, but I felt like there was plays to be made, especially before the end of the first half, where Carson left him out, uh, left a lot of plays out there, a lot of throws out there on the field that I'm sure he'd love to have back. When you talk about eight sacks, you talk about 15 quarterback pressures. Carson was asked after the game whether or not he felt skittish. No quarterback's really going to admit that they were skittish in a game, but <laughs> I don't. I never looked at him and went, "Oh God, he looks terrified." I just thought he made bad plays. Like saying he was scared would be an excuse. Yeah, owning up to the to the fact that your quarterback that you think could still be pretty damn good in this football in this league, owning up to the fact that he made mistakes um, is going to be a big step and hopefully the healing process that we'll experience maybe by Wednesday when we start looking forward to the next game and hopefully a bounce back performance. All right, I got one more thing just to throw in here and it's probably the sidebar. It might not even make make the main story. What's that? Um, Zach Ertz look a little mopey yesterday. <laughs> I, every time they showed him shaking his head. Head down, eyes closed. Uh, maybe I'm reading too much into uh, it, but it's not, three receptions for 18 yards. Like, was he butthurt over that yesterday and that the I other tight think, end was getting eight catches? I don't think you're making too much of it after that Ian Rappaport uh, little nugget came out that Zach and Howie had a uh, verbal disagreement in the facility in heated, front of other players. Heated altercation. Yeah. We'll, we'll let you hear from Ian Rappaport a little later in the show. That's uh, weird. I'm going to answer your question, about. I'm going to say no, I don't think he was mopey. But I, we do expect it to be I'd be Moby better. if I dropped a fourth and three right in my hands. Well, yeah, because of that, but not because of the contract. <laughs> like, I, like, people were tweeting me, is it just me or does Dallas? It was Dallas- a protest drop, 6-1-0, 6 one <laughs> 6 6 3 2. I mean, he had a ball thrown behind him, and he's shaking his head like, what the hell's going on here? Really? I, Who are you blaming? I didn't, I didn't think of it like that. I mean, he's, I think he's blaming his quarterback. I, I don't think he's blaming Is that right? Uh, you know, come on. If I don't see what? that report from Ian Rappaport. And I, 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 I'm i not even talking. I was saying this during the game. I had no idea about what happened before the game and right. all that. I thought he was a mopey little bitch yesterday. I really did. And I thought he played as such. <laughs> really? I'm serious. I swear to God. I, I looked at him and I said, there's a guy who before three days or four days before the first game of the season, you're complaining about your contract. And you're showing With two it on years the, remaining. And you're showing it on the field. He showed it on the field yesterday. I didn't get that from him. I, that's I, what I, I felt. I, I, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I, I hear you. I mean, you can't help what you see yeah. and feel. Right, and that's right, right. that's exactly what I felt. I felt he was mopey out there yesterday. And maybe it was because Goddard had such a great game that I felt that way. I'm not saying I'm right, uh-huh. that, but that's what I felt yesterday uh, watching him. I had a couple of people tweet me, and I, I it, the thought crossed my mind just because Goddard was the guy coming out of the gates really early in that game. But Ertz er, had the first touchdown. So I'm watching it, and people, a couple of people tweeted me, oh, does it seem like Dallas Goddard? They're working into the game plan more and more. You know? And I'm like, I don't want to read into it too much. And then by the end of the game, I think Goddard had seven, or excuse me, Goddard, I think, had nine targets to Ertz's seven. So it wasn't like right. it was no, 15 it wasn't, yeah. two, you know what I mean? But bottom line is, regardless of, of money, regardless of contracts, he's got to make that play. Like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't open. like his body language at all yesterday. Ertz in the middle of the field needs to make that play to keep that drive going. So I don't know if you could tell we got a lot to dissect as this game goes on. When we come back, we're going to go through. Well, first off, we're going to release the uh, the official Twitter poll of the show today. It's going to be basically the offensive line or Carson Wentz. Who are you more upset with today about their performance? We're going to get into that conversation. And then we're going to go through the sacks. Because Dan Orlovsky, of all people, to be real with you. Hell hath frozen over. <laughs>
I, like, I, I got the sense, like, ESPN was telling Dan, hey, Dan, you just, just, you, just you got to pile on Carson. You, even if Carson is, like, great in the open, just find two things you didn't like and just talk about that. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that conversation. We got Sean and Voorhees. And, and Sean, please stay there through the break because I'll tell you this right now. I, I have to talk to you first before I talk to another caller. And another caller, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's 601. The phone line started to light You are correct. Yeah, 601. It, so he was, he was chomping at the bit. Is that how you say that? Chomping at the bit? I always forget. Uh, uh, Mikey, I think it is chomping at the bit, yes. Uh, uh, Mikey KOP is there as well. But uh, I'm going to talk to Sean first because Sean is not Mike, and that's the only reason I'm going to do it. Mark Farzetta with Bob Cooney and Jamie Lynch. Mornings on 97.5 The Fanatic. Philadelphia. Philadelphia.